Good morning, folks. We've got solar and geophysical looks. We'll get interesting new discoveries and those that fall in line with much of what observers are used to hearing. The starting point, the sun, is finally ending its uptick. During sunspot maximum, especially in the ascent and descent, we will get a week or two of this and a week or two that is more quiet. We've had numerous CMEs, minor geomagnetic storms, and a coronal hole stream impact, and the march continues. Top quake of the day returns seismicity to India. It has been a few years since the Himalayan earthquake sequences kicked in. They are always devastating when they do. I am hoping this pressure release is all they're going to get, but they usually build up much bigger than this. Pretty significant alert tonight for the central states. It will begin as a major flood risk, but shift into severe alerts throughout the day and into the evening hours. Eyes open across that convergence line tonight. Up first in the articles is a new one from the ESA on what are being called solar campfires. Kind of a silly name for the high energy emitting regions down within sunspot groups and low level field complexes. But they're saying it's reconnection releasing that helps to heat the solar corona. And provided that reconnection is Alphane's version of circuit disruption releasing the energy at the point of disruption, then yeah, let's blame reconnection. Up next, we've got Alma scoping protostars of incredible size. No nice pretty disk here, just utter chaos. The jets and warp disks and material inflows are much more random and without order than they had imagined, and the key appears to be looking at that largest class of baby stars. Excellent group up next, including Dr. Pulowski, who did a great interview for our cosmology series and movie, building on previous work showing how there continues to be a big difference between what is suggested by the cold dark matter cosmology and what is shown in observable reality. Observations over math all day. The big cosmology study is the latest to crush the hopes for axions. Not only did they not find them, but they found no evidence suggesting their existence at all. Given that the field has already acknowledged WIMP dark matter is on its way out, what's left after six major no axion studies the last two years? Up next, folks, sometimes the world's number one geophysical journal hits a home run. Other times, it's a hit by pitch in the face and they're calling out the stretcher. This is the latter, suggesting that earthquakes are not able to be predicted. And while I am certain that this paper was written and submitted long before our latest major confirmation of the predictability of magnitude 8 events came out, these guys missed the remainder of the field. Hundreds of studies out there. And for those who saw our video or are familiar with the solar polar fields and megaquakes correlations, I went ahead and made this graphic. We are now at four in a row hitting the model here, two positive maximum power events on the left, one hitting the solar polar field's magnetic reversal in the middle, and then of course earlier this year, it was a negative power peak for the New Zealand event. One of the reasons these earthquakes can be forecast is the conductivity profile of the planet. Up next, we're diving down deeper into not only a new conductivity profile, but a new temperature profile for the Earth's interior as well. Swarm data is tossing models into disarray, and this not only nods at the electroquake science, but at everything that matters inside the Earth for the great disaster. The magnetic excursions, the induction of the great solar blast into the core, the unlocking of the low velocity zone in the mantle heaving and potential crustal effects of the LLSVP's breakdown, and the rest of the underground skeleton that tells us this planet is much more than the setup of homogeneous concentric shells. We greatly appreciate your support. Click our name and go to the homepage to learn more about all of these topics. And if you missed the updates on our new children's book or at Observer Ranch, you won't want to miss yesterday's show. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.